Rebecca Miano is the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Trade, Industry and Investments. She's joining us on the programme from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Um, thank you for your time this evening, Mrs. Miano. So let's start with, with the EU's argument. They say that this agreement binds it to not apply export subsidies, especially with regard to food, even in times of market crisis. But what verification mechanisms do we have as Kenya to ensure they actually play by those rules? Thank you very much. This economic partnership agreement between Kenya, which is an East Africa community member on the one part and the European Union on the other part, is a big boost for our trade. It opens many opportunities. This agreement makes sure that Kenya will gain immediate and permanent duty-free and quota-free access to trade into the European Union. And this will cover many commodities like apparels, agriculture products, we'll have shoes, we'll have leather, we'll have flowers, and many, many more horticultural products. And therefore, we herald an era where Kenya, small, medium enterprises, will have an opportunity to value add their goods and access a very huge market. All right. And um, given that EU farmers already benefit from the, the common agricultural policy, and that, of course, has been a bit of a sticking point in some of the trade negotiations we've had, you know, going back at least a decade, can we really call this an even playing field, though, between EU farmers and Kenyan farmers? Because, as you say, granted, Kenyan farmers now have quota-free, duty-free access into the EU market. But how does it work in reverse? So, yes, the farmers will now benefit from this market. And this will put meaningful, meaningful gain into agriculture. We will reduce post-harvest losses. And in Kenya, in order to gain in this market, we are coming up with county aggregation and industrial parks. And these aggregation centers will have facilities where farmers can bring their produce for good storage and also for processing so that it will have an opportunity for export into the EU. And we will be going around, talking to farmers, giving them information, disseminating the actual information, useful information, so that they can get and take full advantage of this EPA agreement. Does this EPA entail any revenue losses on the Kenyan side, uh, given the fact that, you know, of course, we're essentially trying to liberalize trade between the two sides, and the EU is a fairly big source of imports, not as large as China, but still a significant source of imports. Does it entail revenue losses for the Kenyan side? Sorry, I missed. The, the line was shaky. Would you go over that again kindly? Yes, absolutely. Does, does this trade agreement entail any revenue losses? for the Kenyan side? Because as we try and liberalize trade flows between the EU and Kenya, it's a you know, $3 billion plus trade relationship to the extent that we're essentially saying, okay, let's remove tariffs on some of the things that we're importing from European markets. Doesn't that imply there's a revenue loss that Kenya will incur? This agreement has a cushioning mechanism. We will identify items or goods that are seen to be sensitive and goods that might deny the local market competitiveness. And therefore, there is a cushioning mechanism for this risk. And we do not see any possibility of the Kenyan farmers or the Kenyan traders um, and business people losing their businesses. What about our neighbors in East Africa? Because it's been, you know, at least 10 years plus, right, of trying to negotiate this EPA. And back around 2016, 2017, Uganda and Tanzania both said, look, we're not interested in signing this. Uh, the, the 
former Tanzanian president, uh, Benjamin Kappa, in fact, argued that the high levels of liberalization that this deal requires will essentially be putting our local industries in jeopardy. Now that Kenya has essentially moved a step forward to ratifying this deal, are these concerns by our East African neighbors, who we also trade with a fair bit, are those concerns still valid? We do hope that Kenya signing this economic partnership agreement with EU will open doors and possibilities of other East Africa community countries following suit. And we do hope that the Kenya EPA agreement will be a model. There is also a clause that will protect commodities that are sensitive within the East African community. And therefore, even as we have a clause that protects some of the goods in Kenya so that you do not dilute the market and you do not flood the market with commodities, that there is also a clause that protects the other East African community countries. Tell, we do hope tell us, tell us about those, de okay. those clauses in a bit more detail. How exactly would they work? Um, does it essentially give, say, for example, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, the ability to impose compensatory tariffs, for example, if they feel that some industrial goods coming into their market, which may have been sourced in part from the EU, will essentially be a threat to the industrial sectors? There is, there is a clause, there, or there is a schedule where we shall look at the goods that might be affected and we will discuss with the EU and we will append those goods both for Kenya and the East Africa community so that those are excluded from the EPA trading and therefore protect the sanctity of the trade within Kenya and within East Africa. And there is also another rendezvous clause that in future we can discuss trade in services that are not included right now. And in due course, we will be discussing trade in services. And also this agreement has a whole chapter on trade for sustainable development. It will have um, things like green energy, and other sustainable development trade practices. And therefore, we are quite upbeat that this will open many opportunities, and especially for the SMEs and value addition to be done in Kenya, and that this will, will put more pockets to the small traders, both in Kenya and also in Europe. And this will also create more jobs for the youth in Kenya and reduce the level of unemployment. All right, then one last question for you, uh, Mrs. Miano. The, the EU is also trying to implement the EU carbon border adjustment mechanism, and it came in for a bit of criticism at COP28 some weeks ago. How does that fit in to this EPA that has been negotiated? Will it trigger any extra tariffs on goods produced in Kenya and then sold into the EU, especially once since it takes effect in 2026? This agreement encourages goods that are low in carbon, that are sustainable, that are green. And this will work well with what Kenya launched recently, that is... Africa Green Industrialization Initiative. And we do hope because climate, climate change and just conservation of environment is at the core of this agreement. We do hope that the, the green goods and goods that are sustainable and that protect the environment will actually be very attractive to the EU market. Therefore, will encourage um, the traders and the business people to, do, to deal a lot with the green business and the sustainable development for more money in their businesses. All right, we do, I'm sure that will be very attractive for all the traders.